Okay, thank you. I will try to uh, talk louder, but uh, I'm not used to it, so we will see how it will go. So, uh, my name is Gabriel Novak. Uh, I'm from MES, and uh, I will uh, speak about the rapid IoT prototyping. And uh, let's imagine that I didn't drive this with Belina uh, there, so you don't know what the solution will be. So, uh, what's going to do? So uh, we, as a mess, we uh, everybody uh, listens to to this uh, introduction of mess, or uh, I would say maybe a few. You can words. share your view. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so my view is uh, exactly as Mars. Uh, so, uh, lucky game and lucky. <laughs> <laughs> We are taking care of digital transformation, and uh, we uh, were uh, our company were born in uh, Israel in 1999. Uh, and from some interesting internal stuff, we have a uh, few uh, practices like uh, cloud uh, engineering uh, experience, design, which is like UI guys, data and analytics, uh, which are big data guys, Salesforce and intelligent engineering, which are uh, guys that take care of some automation of processes, so like uh, um, uh, like uh, DevOps and maybe DevOps and stuff around that. So, so these are groups of people that uh, are doing the same, uh, or uh, they, are, they are working with some same technologies. And then we have uh, uh, different domains that uh, we work at, so like media, media and entertainment, manufacturing and transportation, financial services and technology. So then do we work also with DWS, Microsoft Asia as partners, Confluence, Snowflake and other, other stuff. So yeah, we are uh, around the world, so uh, mainly uh, me and Marsh from COE, we work also with uh, other teams and we have like an uh, overview of uh, what uh, they are working on so we can uh, leverage their knowledge uh, on some uh, on our work. Uh, so I'm uh, from manufacturing and transfer transportation domain and we in COE, we are uh, working on exploring uh, new technologies, new ways of how to uh, solve problems. We really are executing POCs and uh, uh, creating accelerators for other teams when they are starting the uh, working on some new technology or new concept. They can use our accelerators to start not from the from the zero but from them. So and. Speaking about rapid prototyping, uh, uh, one of our cl client clients uh, and the beginning of uh, this year uh, had a problem. They had uh, buses, fleet of buses, but uh, they uh, wanted to implement some uh, digital ticketing solution. Uh, so, because uh, currently uh, in, in the current uh, situation, uh, it's big added value to, to have like a digital ticketing system and uh, like traveling uh, people that, they, that are traveling in public transportation can buy tickets any, uh, anytime they want. They have tickets uh, on a mobile phone and can uh, just go to the bus and uh, uh, travel with it. So uh, and uh, they wanted solution and they were thinking about uh, buying one existing solution or implementing uh, it by themselves. So we help them uh, with with this this problem, and uh, so our task was may, mainly to build POC and then to evaluate uh, cost of real production uh, system. So uh, th this public ticketing device uh, is like a small device like uh, that one on. Uh, on the picture which is mounted in bus and can uh, read barcodes and verify that it's real generated by uh, by uh, the company and uh, not by some hacker. 
So uh, these tickets uh, are generated by a mobile app. It, it wasn't our task to, to do also generating of tickets, just to validating them. And ticket is represented by QR code. This QR code has a payload that is uh, uh, crypted and hashed, and uh, using a public key we can uh, find out if it's uh, valid or if it's just created by some hacker to, to travel uh, free through the city. So uh, validation outputs should be uh, on display because there are different type of tickets and when. Uh, yeah, question. What's the plan of this to realize it without network or with network? Uh, uh, like software updates and keys updates with network, but validating without. Okay. So maybe once a day or once a week. So it was like in Latvia, uh, this big stupid system, you're buying a ticket and you start working on there after a few days when we are uh, manually transferring data from one device to another, yeah? <laughs> it's very specific to local <laughs> situation. We have almost the same, yeah, every time the bus goes to depot and evening we are putting some SSD or something and uh, putting in some other hardware and updating database and uh -huh. when you are uh, buying tickets uh, online, it mm -hmm. starts working only after a few days. Uh -huh. Today, oh no, already. Already. Is, is uh, it really? Of course, you know yeah, that no uh, really got the cut started. It's man manually, manually, yeah, the disk came, yeah. Like yeah, no, it, it, it was meant a bit different. Uh, like, uh, the system that uh, tickets uh, can be falsified, or uh, like, uh, yeah, can be falsified, was uh, uh, that uh, every uh, mobile phone will have some set of keys and uh, it will encrypt uh, the, uh, the ticket uh, with different key every maybe 5 or 10 minutes. So every 5 or 10 minutes on the mobile phone there will be different QR code for the same ticket. And uh, uh, th this will be uh, for... So uh, when you will buy a ticket, and you can send it to your friends and they can, uh, like with this QR code, they can also tra travel, uh, but just you are paying with it. But uh, when it's uh, changing uh, every five minutes, they will have to also get the new version every five minutes. So it's like much harder to falsify this ticket. But uh, this synchronization is synchronization of, of public keys. So, uh, you can buy a ticket, and uh, in the moment when you buy a ticket, you buy it from a server, and uh, but all the devices have this uh, current key that is generated, and your ticket is signed with. So, so, so it's not like you buy a ticket, and uh, two days later it uh, will start to function, but uh, they have this uh, asymmetric keys generated uh, like signatures. Yeah, uh, but they have it generated not just for one day, but for a few days uh, prior, so... If you correctly understood, these tickets con uh, can only buy the board online? You have some offline tickets also? Uh, only bought online. Offline, no offline tickets? Uh, it's no. Like, you can buy tickets, for example, a day ago or two no, days ago. No, buy tickets, no? Uh, uh, buy, but o buy online then pay for it and uh, then activate it two days later and it no, no. Do you have in this system paper tickets? Like physical? Physical paper tickets? Oh, no. The ones you oh. buy now you say yeah. 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 Uh -huh. no. No. no, this is question. Can you do live tracking of passengers uh, with this kind of system? So can I say Whoa. this bus Whoa. has that... Whoa. No, <laughs> this, uh, this bus has uh, that <laughs> many people at this moment, for example. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. Not even. I hope not, that's GDPR, that's like, I don't know, uh, someone's getting sued. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, not like that, an individual, I didn't ask that, <laughs> like, we think that in the first place, but, but no. It. If a third entity, right, let's say the app developers, or like the guys who made the box, one of them knows where you are, live, why do they need to know that? And do you know that they know that? <laughs> the GDPR stuff. Uh, okay, they so better not know. So, great question. <laughs> but, uh, our our task was just uh, uh, doing this uh, public uh, 
tickets validation, and uh, I'm really not sure how uh, these tickets are generated uh, and uh, if QR codes can be assigned to uh, or person can be identified by this QR code payload. So uh, I think not, but uh, it's, not, <laughs> it's not our business uh, how tickets are generated. Question. But let's say if you are saying that you are updating the ticket every five minutes, you are updating just the QR code. How do you feed back into the application that the ticket was used? Or I can still use the ticket and forward it to the friends even after I. Uh, kind of give it amazing keys. But the yeah, but the ticket is still live though. Even yeah. if they are using the ticket or the keys of the ticket. You like. Uh, we, we can talk, uh, we, we can speak uh, a lot, like a uh, long time about this, but uh, this is made by uh, this uh, ISO standard, so uh, for every of this stuff is taken care of. But uh, I can say, like, uh, this uh, keys that uh, which, which uh, the ticket is signed with are rotating, but they have time from when to when uh, they are valid. So like a uh, mobile application knows uh, which key to use now and uh, also uh, validation device knows which, uh, with which key it should now validate the ticket. But if the device does not use network, it does not feed back into the system that the ticket was used. So that means that the yeah, mobile yeah. phone does not know. Your yeah, device knows. knows. My device can be all offline? Uh -huh. Why not? So if it is some sort of... Uh, Appropriate uh, uh, application. Yeah, yeah. Guys, yes, yes. Just yes. let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a topic. You, you, you cannot uh, not know that the uh, ticket was used. Yeah, exactly. you, uh, if if <laughs> I uh, generate ticket now, send it to to ten people, and they will use it now or in this uh, period of five minutes, I wouldn't know. I, I will know only if they will do it on the same device, and so in the same bus. So. Like can you disclose the place where it's yeah. used? <laughs> 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 yeah. About which country? Yeah, we took yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> or city. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, can you disclose the place where it's used? Yeah. Just for. Okay. So <laughs> let's not continue this way. We can Google. So pictures, coalitions. It's not picture from uh, real picture from the real. Uh, the device is not real. Real deployment. <laughs> so I would imagine you are developing system for Riga statics. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, let's talk further. Um, uh, these uh, devices uh, should be deployed uh, in buses uh, near driver, so driver can see what uh, type of tickets, uh, uh, type of ticket uh, the traveler used. So when a uh, 55-year-old guy will uh, will like validate a ticket for a six-year-old or uh, up to six years tickets, so uh, it, it, the driver can like look on a person and see that it's uh, not for him, and also uh, deployed in uh, like thousands of PLCs, <coughs> but uh, PLC was, was not about thousands, but uh, just a few. Uh, it should like just consider uh, some public standards and certifications, but uh, it was not our part. We are a software company, so so we were con uh, working on the software part uh, and you know, from hardware uh, device uh, should have uh, LTE mode to connect it. So so like. It could communicate uh, any time, but uh, in uh, there are a lot of times where, where buses don't have uh, connection uh, through mobile mobile networks. So, like uh, uh, main goal was was not to use this this connection, but, but uh, some connection once a day or, or something like that. And LCD display to display data, barcode reader to read payload and uh, uh, send it to the application. So this is great solution diagram when, where we have device reading barcode and then uh, it sends uh, 
uh, payload to application. This is our uh, edge device or our, our validation device that is inside the bus with display uh, to be uh, for application to be compatible with different different platforms and and to make deployment just uh, like compatible with different uh, devices, uh, we used cont containerized uh, environment uh, and uh, also uh, like this Wi-Fi GPS and uh, LTA sensors uh, for synchronization of, of keys and uh, for synchronization of product info uh, we uh, had to use some cloud services that are, are made for this and uh, uh, this, all of this is what uh, people usually uh, see when uh, they are presented with such solution but uh, there are uh, also parts that uh, you won't see like uh, IoT platform and DevOps part uh, because when you want to develop some uh, uh, some software that, that is deployed to a uh, few devices or thousands of devices, uh, firstly some DevOps pipeline should be there so uh, people are working on this uh, application inside of the device, they are checking it to the Git repo and then uh, like through CICD pipeline, uh, making some uh, images and uh, Docker images that, that are uh, through IoT platform and over the air uh, updates sent uh, to our device and uh, new versions are deployed. And uh, IoT platform is needed for uh, also device provisioning, so we can add new devices there uh, to our system and we know which device is which and which is authenticated and can ask data and send data and also what is the device state which versions of uh, containers it has and uh, if it's not offline and, and stuff like this so uh, this is like the same diagram just the written so I can skip this and uh, uh, the main requirements uh, was that uh, uh, so we we have to do this POC as quick as possible and as cheap as possible because it's just like only POC and uh, they want to see see the solution, not see uh, the like correctly working big solution, but like really uh, just the functionality that uh, it's necessary on the devices. So we, we started to uh, to uh, check different uh, IoT platform options so we don't have to implement the sole platforms and so we know what the uh, what is there outside in the space. So first we looked at Mender which is uh, fully API based uh, open source uh, with no vendor login. So uh, the main idea is that uh, there is uh, some device uh, that uh, has a uh, vendor agent uh, installed and uh, it's uh, uh, using uh, some uh, management server we can uh, add new, soft new software versions that are uh, then downloaded uh, to device and installed and uh, when uh, installation will go wrong it has uh, two partitions and uh, it can just uh, uh, switch to older version that is already running uh, but uh, this uh, type of uh, uh, deployment uh, it's uh, not so easy because uh, uh, the deployment part means uh, just running uh, one script inside of uh, this uh, edge device so uh, we would have to write the whole script that uh, that will put the environment and all, all containers up uh, on the device. Uh, so we were uh, looking for some other options. So we looked at AWS IoT Core, which is like uh, perfect when you want to create some uh, uh, bigger 
and more complex uh, IoT solutions. So everything can be done here. Uh, it has big advantage that uh, uh, we can interact with uh, AWS services using SDKs. Uh, we have already implemented uh, containerized uh, edge runtime with this green grass, so we can just deploy uh, functional components and uh, there is also implemented uh, like communication bus between them, so also uh, communication between components is taken care of and a lot of existing accelerators and materials for it. But uh, we were searching uh, uh, for other options because it, it, it's there is also some learning curve and uh, some setup and uh, uh, these components uh, should uh, like be be in a spec have specific structure and it's not so easy to uh, communicate using the bus or what we looked uh, further to Azure IoT Hub, which is like the same story as uh, 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 AWS IoT Core. It's great when you have uh, some bigger solutions and uh, you can use Azure services, uh, also wide range of uh, support platforms it uh, supports. So uh, perfect for this one, but uh, for like quick uh, and uh, easy uh, proof of concept it was too too much. So we continued also to Eclipse IoT, which is uh, even more complex than uh, IoT Core and Azure because uh, there are a lot of services they, uh, that communicate together using uh, interfaces, different interfaces, and it's not so easy to, to connect them. It, it can be done, it is done, but like uh, it's a lot of configuration. Uh, so. Uh, but uh, it's very interesting IoT platform that is uh, uh, under umbrella, umbrella, umbrella of uh, uh, Linux Foundation. So it is modular ar architecture, so you can change any part of this uh, architecture with, with other service that has the same uh, same protocols and uh, interfaces so like MQTT is everywhere so you can exchange any part of it easily but like yeah, a lot of configuration so what to do now and uh, finally we solved it by asking other guys that are, are working with it so we asked our uh, colleagues in uh, Romania and they, uh, they said like we are using Balina for uh, rapid prototyping. Just have a look at it, and uh, you, you will see what you, you will get. So we looked at this, and it was like perfect solution for for quick and easy prototyping. Uh, it runs like that. We have developer that develops uh, code, or group of developers that work on some uh, code. Uh, then code is pushed into uh, Balina server when where it's built. Uh, it's built into Docker uh, Docker images in Docker registry, and then through a VPN manager uh, deployed using Docker Compose to uh, our fleet of devices, and then uh, it also sends using the VPN uh, some monitoring or tel telemetry data uh, to Belina API with this light. Uh, Belina has also API but uh, also web page so you can check state of your devices also on the web page and then you can see feedback and uh, correct errors. Mm -hmm. But biggest advantage is that uh, it's free up to 10 devices. So. Uh, after ten, with more devices than, than 10, it starts to be more costly. So uh, other platforms are uh, uh, better for such uh, solutions. But for just simple prototyping with up to 10 devices, it's free and it, and it contains a lot of features. So uh, for you to see how easy it is to 
uh, to uh, provision device, it means like add new device, we have existing Raspberry Pi, we want to connect it to uh, Balina, uh, so we will take out uh, SD card, burn the system on it and then put it uh, back and it will be connected into the Balina and it goes like this. We have a uh, Dalina page where we have uh, account. Uh, first, in this hierarchy, we have to create organization that is like our organization that uh, owns uh, different fleets. So it is like structure of, of fleets. Uh, we can add team members and group them into different teams and create fleets of devices. So let's create one fleet. So we want to have devices on buses, so we can call it buses and choose default device type. We use ra Raspberry Pi because it's easiest for uh, prototyping. And now we can, we have fleet and we can add devices there. So we can, we have this def uh, default device type, we can use this. Uh, we have option to select development or production uh, addition of operating system and then we also uh, add Wi-Fi credentials. Uh, we can use Ethernet only if our device is connected only to the Ethernet but we can uh, use, use uh, also uh, Wi-Fi credentials if device is connected to the Wi-Fi because when we will turn the device on it will automatically have to connect to internet so this way we have nothing to set up everything is already set up then we can download the uh, operation system with this configuration or we can uh, burn it into uh, SD card and uh, Balina uh, before they created this IoT platform, they were working on Etcher, which is uh, like a tool for uh, burning boot bootable uh, images into SD card. So they use uh, this Etcher by default, and it's open source and free, so you can use it uh, also for burning uh, other images uh, onto SD cards. So. Uh, you are asked in the browser to uh, to your open your browser will uh, show you the button if you you want to burn it using uh, Etcher. You click yes. Etcher is opened with uh, uh, Balina image already edit. You can just select target uh, SD card, uh, then flash it, and after putting it back into the Raspberry Pi. Uh, Raspberry will connect to internet, uh, then connect to uh, Belina Cloud, and your device is ready to to be used. And so, uh, how code is written? So, uh, application that is running in, inside of this Belina image, uh, Belina uh, on the device is uh, uh, change Yocto created operation uh, system like uh, uh, Linux. Uh, that uh, uh, it's uh, optimized for uh, Dockerized or for Docker solutions. So uh, this uh, application that is deployed is uh, Docker Compose application. So the uh, main part of the source code is uh, Balina YAML, where is some definition of your application with supporting the supported devices, and uh, then Docker Compose, which is like here. It looks like classic Docker Compose, it has some changes, but uh, usually uh, s some typical stuff uh, that you can do with Docker Compose is compatible with, with real Docker Compose standards. And uh, so after deploying this, uh, and also the Balina on their website has a marketplace where there are already implemented uh, applications, so you can list applications and maybe you will find something you need and you, you don't have to, to configure it by your, yourself for example home assistant uh, you can click on it and you are um, you are pointed or redirected to uh, a github repo with source code so you can also inspire with uh, their they 
way of implementing and uh, stuff and solving some problems and uh, you, you can use it or change it a bit. Uh, so this is like uh, also a big added value of Belina. And after deployment, deployment is, is done by just uh, do, uh, they have Belina uh, command line tool. So uh, you uh, are inside of uh, this uh, source code uh, folder and uh, write Belina, uh, Belina push and it will automatically push uh, the code to, to this uh, server to build it and uh, deploy images to, uh, to all the devices in the fleet. So, uh, so when you check the devices and click on one device, you can see all the ap uh, applications or all the containers that, that are running. The, the, you, you see that their state, uh, version of release, this release is every push is, uh, is named release. So, Every release uh, has a unique name, and you can also stop the containers. And uh, in terminal, you can connect uh, to uh, it automatically can uh, create SSH uh, connection to the device, and you can connect to the device terminal and also to uh, these uh, containers. So you can browse for log and uh, troubleshoot these uh, applications you developed and uh, for example using this uh, web tool you can set uh, environmental variables of uh, the device it's like a lot of functionality but uh, you, you don't have access to uh, exact process of the deploying devices and uh, how authentication is made it, it's all done for you and you don't have access to it but uh, if it's not uh, like uh, if you don't care th this is quite uh, safe so like if you don't care and, and it's just uh, uh, your uh, proof of concept and you, you don't need some special uh, techniques for it, it it can be easy to implement so thank you for your attention and questions yeah. uh, we are talking about uh, PVC and something uh, around that and Marina perfectly fit for it. But I want to ask you about hardware, what do you use in production? Because, uh, for example, Marina company produces a uh, Marina fit, fit model, if I remember correctly, it's, it's based on a bit more than 3, around mm -hmm. 3 pi. What are you using in hardware in production? Yeah, uh, this was uh, just a PLC and uh, uh, this Raspberry Pi and uh, uh, Balina uh, platform was uh, our choice for PLC, but for production we worked with these uh, colleagues uh, from Romania and I'm not sure what they chose. We chose uh, Greengrass as a, as a production platform for AWS IoT Core. When you decide but to change uh, PLC to production, you change everything, uh, include Balena uh, mm -hmm. cloud and uh, goes to yeah. AWS. Yeah. Yeah. And what about your hardware? It's uh, different hardware, completely different. It's not Raspberry Pi. Uh, for that, uh, it, it is not uh, already implemented, this production uh, hardware. And uh, uh, also uh, our colleagues from Romania have some, uh, some notes or uh, said what it, it should be, but uh, it's up to uh, our customer to, to choose which one will be uh, on the production because uh, he has uh, maybe know. speech about costs <laughs> that, uh, well, something cheaper and uh, we said uh, this one uh, instead of uh, using a uh, Raspberry Pi because it's similar. yeah yeah uh, for sure cheaper uh, I don't know what they will choose but uh, I think it will be cheaper but uh, it sh uh, when you have some device in public transportation or on some public places, it uh, has to uh, undergo some standards uh, of mounting and uh, mm -hmm. uh, we are software company, so, so we are not sure about that and uh, our customer is, so uh, we will choose. But, but like it should be mounted in, uh, in uh, some case that is not flammable and uh, it, 
have to have some uh, certifications and stuff like that. So we are not sure about production device, but it will be different than Raspberry. Mm -hmm. If you create such a prototype quickly for a customer, how can and you show them that proof of concept works, how can you after justify and now we need to build everything from the ground up again and the cost and the time and everything? Like if they see yeah it's already working, we just scale it up or something like that. Uh, because uh, we need this POC because of uh, price and uh, ease of uh, using of, uh, this uh, platform, but uh, when you have uh, more and more devices, uh, you need some. Uh, you will pay a lot using Belina, and uh, you can optimize a uh, lot of stuff uh, using, for example, uh, IoT, uh, AWS IoT Core, and uh, you, you can customize a lot of stuff from it. So, so like. Uh, like the base of the application logic will stay because uh, the source code for uh, this con containerized app will uh, stay quite the same and we will build on it, but uh, just platform will change to, to another. So, so it's not like comp completely rewritten, but uh, we just use it in different platform. Okay, so... Great questions. <laughs> okay, anyone else?